but let me see if there are particular comments or questions because I'm not sure how many of us can sit through this presentation on Flint without having reactions in our guts, in our heads, in our hearts, without thinking about what this means for all of our communities. So let me ask, are there questions that people would like to raise with this last presentation? Yeah, Shannon Dora. <laughs> Why don't you take that to the presenter? Can get it on the record? Yeah. I, I, you want me to it? So what's the difference between photo voice and photo elicitation? So my understand is photo voice is a more step-by-step um, -step procedure. Um, and I'm not sure which scholars sort of are known for that. But it's kind of like the difference between grounded theory from the original authors and grounded theory that's sort of hybridized. So photo elicitation, I think, is broader. Uh, do you think I'm right? No? Okay. And so my understanding is photo voice, you use groups in order to generate sort of what you want to study, et cetera. I, I looked this up. But for us, we didn't do focus groups. We just gave people disposable cameras or let them use the cameras with their phones and said, "How? please take photos of your experience of aging and the water crisis in Flint. So we kind of gave them like one question, but we didn't generate those questions by having focus groups, which is common in photo voice. Yes. <laughs> um, just, you mentioned, you touched on this, um, and I just think it's so critical about the trust factor and the social contract between the government and the people. And um, as you said, that people, it couldn't be repaired when they say that they, you know, just your thoughts on that and broadening it out to. Um, yeah, I think, you know, some people understood this as a long historical narrative of, of racism, um, of, of that contract never being fully made. Um, and I think that for many, that was the experience, and I think for many in Flint, it's you know that contract was broken when GM left. Mm -hmm. um, you know, GM was supposed to be this promise of the American dream, and the idea that um, they could leave and they no longer have access to this, and the kind of plethora of problems that followed, um, is uh, is kind of what I've what, how I've learned about it. Yeah, and I think we think of it in terms of abandonment. I mean, this idea that you just feel like your government has no interest in you. I mean, it is over and over in our interviews, yeah. And so then you have broken trust and then you have the sort of possibility for rebuilding trust. And, you know, it's hard for the residents we're meeting to think that that's possible. Sorry, this is just so interesting. <laughs> um, in your timeline, you said um, you talked about how they switched from um, the Detroit River to the Flint River. Is that the right river names? Um, what was it about that river that was it about? Was it the water in the river, or was it that they just couldn't um, get the treatment plant up and running? Well, that's a very good question. So. Uh, the water treatment side of it, it was clear now that Memo said we were not ready to control the corrosion. And that's what damaged the lead lines. Like, they're damaged in people's houses, right? Um, and that's why they have to replace the city's worth. Um, but also, in our interviews, people are like, but that Flint water is really nasty. Dead bodies float in that. We should have never switched. So it's interesting because that's not necessarily what people are worried about as far as the co corrosion control. But on the other hand, that was sort of the general cultural context of the Flint River. And then I think, um, Oh, I just thought. Of oh, the other thing that just to know is lead is not the only issue. So this idea, our first grant um, on for our older adult study was under a four million dollar grant that was given to Wayne State to study the Legionella spread in Flint. So people are worried about other things in the water, very much so. Uh, 
uh, that also comes up. People feel like it was polluted by the by the industrialization. Certainly, yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of this has to do with what and who is valued and who isn't. We're talking about people and communities that were considered disposable. It really ties in with things that we heard about earlier this afternoon with what is happening in indigenous territories, with what is happening in other parts of the world where we don't care about the environment and we don't care about the people and we are very, very short-sighted. When I think about all the different presentations that we've heard today, I think there's a message in there for all of us about what we should be paying attention to about what should be valued. These are in our traditional teachings. They're in the stories of every single culture. We know this stuff. We need to do something. Yes. So, well, yes. I'm, I'm not going to keep telling it because I think you know. And I want to see if there are other voices out there. I think we've succeeded in what we tried to do today. We had an idea and a planning committee went and said, you know, who can speak to this idea? Who can say something thought provoking and who can get us kind of riled up? And I think there was success. Yeah. I I did not hear one single redundant thing all day. I heard complementary perspectives. A lot of different people came at the issues of environment or water from their experience, from their research, from their activism, from their lives. And to me, it all fit together. But I think that last piece is what do we do with what we have heard? You might have some ideas out there. I mean, some of you took concrete action. That hat that sat over there, that was full in less than two minutes. In less than two minutes, because there was something concrete that we could do that we believed would make a difference. I'm going to turn it back to all of you. Are there other actions that you know of, that you recommend for us? Are there things that are on your mind? Are there things that you are charged up about? We are wrapping up shortly. What is on your mind? What would you like to say? No, I think so many things have been brought up that are all handles for work and that people are already working on. So I know, you know, for me, I feel like, well, at the Western New York Peace Center, we're working on a lot of different things. So, you know, doing more with more of them, trying to get more people involved with more of them, which is pretty much what we do all the time anyway. And um, one of the things that I mentioned before that I'm very charged up about is the Poor People's Campaign, which is meant to uh, connect all the issues. And that whole thing of the underlying issues are all connected. So, so that is something that's kicking off nationally on um, Mother's Day. We have a local um, part of it. There's a, na there's a um, statewide planning um, groups and and th that those groups need help to really broaden it out to all the issues so they, they need to get hooked up with you which I'd be happy to help with that or you know just getting more of us linked up more just keep building that network keep I've been using the hashtag unite the struggles but anyway oh so it's kicking off on Mother's Day it's supposed to be 40 days of action and I don't think it's ideal I think it's another handle for work 
and there's plenty of them out there. All the things that you're talking about, going out to Cowder's Port is another one, and there's so many things working through. I'm so glad to see social workers as activists, which we are. So anyway, thank you so much, everybody who put this day together. Really. Are there other thoughts, comments, calls to action? I mean, I think we need to also remember that we need to start support our young people who are actually starting a movement and they're bringing these issues together naturally and fluidly. And um, we need to be out there with them, beside them, um, behind them, spreading that message. Others? Um, yeah, way in the back. <laughs> I, I just think such a big piece of all of this is really getting to what matters and what the truth is about so many things. Like somebody just mentioned the young people and the movement um, with the gun violence. And, and I think what I've been so impressed with with that is that they're they're calling out the politicians and the NRA and they're not taking the lies and um, and I think we need to do that with environmental issues with the water issues with so many things is not just keep taking the lies that we've been fed um, and and so much of it just is just following the money and who's making the money off of these things the Flint situation happened because somebody was trying to save money on someone else's back and I just it's just thinking through our choices and um, with everything that we do and when we're voting, when we're shopping, when we're, you know, how are we harming the earth and how are we um, just feeding into the lies that we've been fed? I would agree that being thoughtful is a big part of it. Keep our eyes open, keep our ears open, be conscious, be aware. Be aware of our environment, our world, our impact. We started today talking about the many things that we need to be thankful for and the many ways that we can think about water. Can't resist saying it. Mini Wichoni, water is life. <laughs> this, is, this is what it's all about. If we're not taking care of the water, if we're not taking care of the environment, um, it's not just a matter of justice, it's a matter of survival. We are aware of that. Let's go out and make some other folks aware of that. As, yes, I like the woo. So this is your last chance for woos, other comments, other things you would like to say? Um, I think one of the biggest things that people need to overcome is fear. Because now that we know all this, what are we gonna do with this information? And that's something I know they talked about on the panel, but, um, and it doesn't matter where you are. I mean, you everybody comes from different communities. So that's what your responsibility, your new responsibility is today, now that you have heard everything you've heard today. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're sitting over here discussing, you know, what can we do? We're in Buffalo right now. Well, there's a Sabres game going on right now. We could go right over there and start doing action, <laughs> you know, to create where awareness. And, you know, and I do it at work. I do it wherever we go. We're always spreading awareness. No matter, It doesn't even matter if there's a big crowd like this. It could be just one person that we've met. But you need to take on that responsibility and not be afraid 
to spread that awareness and and make everybody aware because you know the awakening isn't over yet and there's so many people that still we have yet to awaken and until that happens i mean we're just going to be continue to fight and we know that you know this fight is we may never see an end to it in our lifetime but you know this is where our kids come in and and yeah we need to get them involved i told i told um everybody about i always tell you my kids come with me everywhere my son is 11 and my daughter is 15 but we take them everywhere and and at first i didn't think they were listening but they do i mean my son knows how important this is and he's 11 and my daughter she's you know 15 and she knows but i'm trying to get them to be vocal about it now so now that they're more knowledgeable the next step is to have them speak out and create their own awareness in school wherever other sports you know everywhere so um we thought we would close if you would have us do another song um yes. i think that would be a good closing to all this because you know that's what clarence i don't know if you mentioned about you know having <laughs> having being of one mind so we just like to end with that if you oh. I think that would be the perfect way to end. We've heard so many suggestions on how each one of us can be that hummingbird doing something. Right. So remember that and let's end in a good way. My thanks to all of you. Yeah, this song, this song is about the you know, local body. It's uh, actually learned it from uh, Tim Mohawk. We're starting because of the Tender Bar. We're part of all the Six Nations, so yeah. we share music, share our language with each other. <clears throat> Ready? <laughs> <laughs>